Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to another repot with me, except it's not actually a repot with me. You may notice quite a few plants here in front of me. So I don't know where to start. I've had a lot of plants come through my doors this week, shall we just say. <sighs> it's my fucking living wall, dude. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know what? I'm going to talk through it. So I can't believe that. I've just literally stood to record and it comes on. Honestly, it's been a mad week. So I did have different content planned for you today. However, if you've been following my Instagram, you'll know that I haven't exactly had the best run this week. I've just been really ill with different things. Not only that, but I've had a lot of business stuff going on this week and I have had a shit ton, a metric shit ton of plants come through this door. So really what I'm gonna have to do is kind of work and film, I guess, at the same time. So I have several of these boxes. Like I have a lot of these boxes, but I'm not gonna get through all that today, but at least I can dent a little bit of it. So in this box, I have a mixture of Anthurium crystallinum and Anthurium regal, I think. It's not even all of them. I've had to just fill a box full to do this video. All that's gonna happen in this video is I'm going to cut the root balls and I have a tray down here behind me that you can't see and I'm going to put the plants in there. If I run out of plants while we talk, I will get some more. That living wall's really going for it. I'll kick things straight off actually. A lot of people have been asking about the wall. Can we see it? Can we have a tour? I'm really hoping to film that in the next week or so, as well as some behind the scenes stuff. So stick with me just a little bit longer. Let me get through this next few days and I should have that for you. My wall, oh my God. Are you finished? Are you, are you finished? Okay. So the wall is finished. So I have some scissors. I do have some questions as per usual. I have kind of a mixed bag as per usual. And we're just gonna get started. You needn't bother judging my hair as well. I haven't actually done my hair today. I filmed yesterday for my second channel. Um, it won't be up by the time you're watching this. And I just kind of just woke up and just decided, you know what, this is my hair today to repot because I have so much work to do. I keep calling it repotting and I'm not repotting anything. How irritating. <laughs> Also, actually, at some point, if you hear noises, um, it's actually Ben in the unit. He's not in here at the minute. He's in front of house printing some labels off to ship some boxes out. Um, but if you hear weird noises, it's because he's in here with me. He's just going to be over there doing some stuff. So hopefully it won't be too distracting. Now, what I haven't done is I haven't got myself a bin for all the shit. Oh, we could use this. See how far this goes, even though it's going to get absolutely soaked. This is a box that's had uh, bubbles in, I think. So we'll use that, even though it's way too small. Okay, some questions I have written down for you guys today. What have I got? I've got a few things. How often do you do a launch? Someone asked me. Um, at the minute, at the minute, it's around about every three weeks on my shop. Um, it, it's, it's not happening right now and we've got some stuff coming through the door this week so that's kind of postponed the next launch a little bit. We probably did the last launch around about three weeks ago but I think we're going to need a little bit more time on that just to, to get through this next week to be honest because it's going to be really hectic so every three weeks there will be one soon <laughs> and uh, I will update you guys when stuff goes out. Before you ask me what's in the launch, I actually don't know. Um, there might be some Gloriosa in it, which is great because a lot of people have been asking me. Definitely Pareso Verde. I'm up to my ears in those. Um, there could be some Esqueleto, Monstera Esqueleto. There may be some Syngonium, I don't know. There should be some Burly Marks Variegata in there. There might be some Monstera Aurea in there as well. I, I, I really like to think there will be. It's really hard to say, guys, because I can just say trays full of stuff and they, they need checked. But I know no one's technically asking, but I know people like to know these things. So I like to tell you as much as I can when I can. Right, so I'm going to put the root ball in there. That's literally all I'm doing, guys. It's very, very simple today. Pulling a plant out, doesn't really matter what it is, and cutting off the, ooh, all the packaging. These are sopping wet. If you see them drip, that uh, it's not your eyes. They are sopping wet because I soaked them overnight just to plump back up in the unit in extra humidity. So I really, really pelt things when they come into the shop. Give them as much humidity as possible. Let them warm up gradually. Just let them do their thing. Just let them sit and chill. These will probably go back into water for a little bit longer. They probably won't get potted today, I don't think, because they've been with me less than 24 hours. So I think they will stay in water a little bit longer, but considering I have to unpack these anyway, 
why not start now, right? Um, oh God, if I had a penny for every time someone asked me about the fish video, I swear to God, guys. So a lot of you, every single time I do a report, ask me about the fish video. You know, can we see the fish? Why haven't you done the fish tour? What's going on? Um, there's no real reason for it other than I am genuinely just too busy to do it. To film fish is not the easiest. I did try quite a long time ago, like in prep for that tour. And I just honestly, guys, I couldn't film it. It was really difficult for me. Um, I've tried all the tips everyone gave. It was just a little bit of a struggle because I tend to keep fish that move very quickly. So, you know, barbs, rainbows, stuff like that. So it wasn't the easiest thing in the world to film them. So I haven't really had the time to, to set that up and do a really, really nice tour of the tank. I wanted to do it some justice. Um, I do have a plan to tank because people ask me actually, do I have any plants in my fish tank? And I do. They're looking like shit though. I'm going to be totally honest with you. They're looking like shit. They've got loads of holes in the leaves and I'm pretty sure... I'm 99% sure that it's because all of my beautiful plecos are actually rasping on the leaves. So they just look like shit all the time. Everything's nice and green. It's just there's holes in everything. So it's, it's not ideal. Before you say that they need wood to rasp on, there is a ton of wood in the tank for them to rasp on. So that that's not an issue or anything like that. It's just, they just like to do it, I think. I don't think it's any other issues. I do have like CO2 in the tank, a proper canister for that and everything. Really nice regulator, I think. And it comes with like this really cool pH thing. So if the pH drops, CO2 turns off. It's really cool, love that. Um, but just generally, it's just not looking its best. It's just gonna take me so much time to film guys. And I don't really have that level of time right now. Things are going to start getting really hectic as I go through this year because obviously this is full season for me and it's actually really shit because every time it's full season for me here, it's kind of full season for me on YouTube in terms of videos and, and content. But then when season calms down here, so in the winter, the content for YouTube like massively ramps up. So there's no real like respite from it at all. It's just constantly like this every single week. I had so much content planned for you guys and it, it is still in the works. Um, it's just a little bit delayed with everything going on. So honestly, it's just one thing after another. It's ridiculous. I know you probably can't see me um, pulling this off, but there's not a lot of ways to do this. You either get plants or you get one plant at a time in front of you. And I just feel like maybe that's a better view. So I realize this isn't absolutely unbelievable viewing, but at the same time, not so sure there's a lot I can do about it. These roots are really good from this import. Really, really nice roots. I like those. Um, to save you asking questions in the comments about these plants, how long do I keep these for? It depends on the plant. For example, these have just come in yesterday, right? These plants. There's, there's a shit ton of them. I'm a bit worried. Um, these have just come in yesterday, so it's a case of how long they kind of need before they go out. Like, not every plant's probably going to have an amazing root system. The ones so far do, but I suspect this one here does not. So let's have a little look at it, and I will tell you how long I think I might keep this plant for. Yeah, this is going to stay with me a while, <laughs> this one. And that leaf's probably going to go. That's all that's on that one. I don't know if you can see. If I hold that up a little bit more. That's all that's on that one, that single leafer. So that's with me a period of months. Quite honestly, that's at least three months, maybe. Maybe it might be all right in three because that foliage there is probably going to go. It's going to take a while to sprout more foliage. Obviously, I need better roots. So you're looking at three months for that. And then maybe something like this. Two months, maybe. Depends. I like to keep things eight weeks anyway. I think my like DEF CON amount of time that I will keep a plant um, after I've brought it in would probably be about a month and that's like the lowest I will go and that's only certain types of plants and I have to know that they can just handle it and there's not many plants that can. I think my Syngonium can handle it quite well. It's hard to say, isn't it really? Not a lot of plants can handle it though. I've had some plants in here that I've still got acclimating from late last year and that they're catching up now, don't get me wrong, but God. So yeah, I think Generally speaking, a month is like my DEF CON level. Personally, I don't really agree with keeping things less than a month. I don't really think that's right. I think so many things can happen to a plant in two weeks, right? A plant can go from being absolutely fine to dead as hell in two weeks. So you know you at least need to keep plants two weeks, but that's still not long enough for new growth and things to really show and stuff like that. So for me, two weeks is just not really adequate at all. It's, it's usually about four. I would say, to, to really be 
to really be doing your, you know, due diligence in acclimating. I would do a month, personally. Not everyone does, trust me. But um, I think a month is probably good. Never, never, never less than a month. It's You're just going to get problems when you ship it out. You really are. There's no point. Oh, this one's got two little leaves and then two big leaves. He's nice, isn't he? Have I even done any regal yet? No. All right, let's do another question. Uh, <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm laughing at someone asking me about my work-life balance, but I'll get to that later because here I am. Uh, okay, so, so someone asked me about how do you handle plants that um, basically their leaves just go before they fully unfurl, even though you've got great humidity, I think is, is what you're asking in summary. So that happens a lot even here, you know, and I think when that happens, if you've got a plant that's unfurling a leaf and like it comes out to mush or it's brown before it's out or something like that. I mean, assuming the root system is fine, I would honestly say it could be airflow or it could even be light. That can normally cause a big issue. It's, it's kind of a minefield with plants because it could be anything that ever goes wrong with a plant. It's like, I, I do understand the struggle <laughs> because anything that ever goes wrong, it's like, well, maybe it's the roots. Maybe it's light. Maybe it's humidity. Have you tried humidity? Have you tried light? It's like, it is very difficult. I do really, really appreciate how difficult it is. And if it makes you feel any better, it's the same for me here. Things go wrong with plants all the time. And often I'm not there to see it. Like I'm stood in amongst plants here, but there's plants all the way at the top. There's plants all the way along there. There's plants on the living wall. There's plants in my studio. Like things can go wrong all the time. And you've just got to kind of play detective on what's going on. And it, it is very difficult. So even I can't give you like a concrete answer. But if you've nailed humidity and you know it's not that and you've got something reading out humidity and you're confident that that's accurate, then I guess make sure you've got enough light and check airflow. Maybe it's airflow. Because I find sometimes in high humidity, plant leaves can still get stuck when they're unfurling, even in really high humidity. It happens in here still with anthuriums and things like that. And I think that's an airflow issue because I think obviously when the air moves through plants, they can move a little bit. And I do feel like it helps loosen up those like tightly coiled leaves when they come out. So if you're struggling, I'm going to say that my first guess is airflow based on that. But of course, it depends what type of problem you're having with the leaf, you know, dying. Like, is it simply turning brown? Is it just getting stuck and buckling? Like, sorry, my hair's stuck to me. It's, it's not it's not sexy at all. It really depends what it is. So I hope that helps. Check the airflow is my first thing. Because I think, to be honest, a lot of problems I've got in here or had in here have been airflow. Um, that and pH of water, but that's, that's like a totally different thing. Um, entirely that I'm learning to manage, should we say. So even for me here, it's things are a struggle. Honestly, please don't feel bad sat at home. You know, if things aren't going absolutely perfect with your plants, it is a massive learning curve. Honestly, it's a massive learning curve. Like a lot of people ask me, you know, how's your plant care changed being in here? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's hard to even quantify how it's changed because you learn something new every day, especially when you're dealing with like this amount of plants, you learn fast as well. Uh, and if you don't learn first, you lose a hell of a lot of money. So it's it's just difficult, you know. So many things happen. Temperature isn't a problem in here. Humidity isn't a problem in here because we have systems that are literally regulating that. And we have a really smart, intelligent system that monitors the correct humidity for that given temperature. We specify what we'd like, a humidity we'd like, a temperature we'd like. And if it falls and rises or whatever else, there, there is a system in place that will doctor those levels to kind of accommodate it. And it's quite sexy. So stuff like that, we're cool with. Um, airflow, I'd, I'd definitely like to improve on 100%. So that's kind of what I'm about at the minute and what we're trying to do. But a lot is happening. You will definitely get that tour really soon. I'm going to do my best to get that out next week. Fingers crossed. Don't hold me to it, though, because there's a lot going on in this shop right now. But I will do my absolute best. I know the view isn't great. I am very sorry, but I don't think the view is normally that good when we do these videos, is it? Not really. Um, oh, okay. Somebody asked me, what do you like best and worst about being a YouTuber? <laughs> oh boy. I had to think about this one a little bit before I started filming, actually. Not for any deep-seated reason. I was just kind of like, oh yeah, like what, what do I really think about it? Do you know what I mean? Because 
I'm constantly doing something and it's, it's not always YouTube in my daily life. Obviously a lot of it's this and I'm so busy. I don't really stop and think about things very much. Okay, so best and worst thing about being a YouTuber. Let's start with the best because that's what's important, right? The best thing, it sounds slightly selfish, but it's, it's a genuine answer. The best thing, to be honest, is if you look at it in terms of like a, a career or a, a, a way of earning money, I get to be my own boss and I get to work for myself. And although I meticulously put out content at the same time every week and I don't miss a week, technically, <laughs> if I wanted to, you know, I could skip that. I could, I could kind of do what I wanted. And I kind of like that. That's really, really nice. Um, in terms of not career stuff, I would honestly say I really get a kick out of making what I consider to be good content and either entertaining someone at home or helping them in some way, whether that's, you know, to make a good decision on what kind of plants to buy, to talk about things that aren't re related to plants, like I often do in these um, repots, for example. Definitely to avoid scams. That's a massive, massive one. Stuff like that. That's what I really enjoy doing. I love putting out good content. I get a kick out of making the video, putting it together. I did get a kick out of editing, but I think editing is just a big strain now. Like editing is a real struggle for me. So I don't enjoy editing so much as I used to, but I still love making content, obviously, or I wouldn't do it anymore. But that's definitely the best thing about it. I would have said, you know, a year ago, it's it's meeting people. But, and I'm sure it still is, don't get me wrong. It's just, I haven't met anyone in a long time. Obviously, one, COVID. Um, two, I've had to close off DMs and stuff like that. So I haven't been able to meet the amount of people I used to, which is sad. Um, but I know that it, it always was the best thing about doing this prior to all of those things happening, basically. So it's not a lot of room on that, is there? So that's definitely one thing as well that's been really awesome for me. I just, I don't know, it's just the, the format of being a YouTuber. I've, I say this to all like people that are close to me. The format of being a YouTuber for me just works for me. I love having my own project to work on. Like at university, I really excelled in that when I had like dissertations or just a project where they, you know, the lecturers would say, Nat, the lecturers would say, you know, here's this project, here's the brief, go, come back to me in a month. That's where I excel personally. That's the thing that I love the most. And I feel like YouTube is just one big, massive extension of that. So in that sense, I absolutely love it. It's just the best thing ever, being able to do that and being able to make effectively little projects every week. And some projects are larger than others. Case in point, documentary. Oh my God. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love doing that. It's one of my favorite things um, about the, the job. Is it a job? I don't know. I don't feel like it's a job. I feel it's more like a personal choice at this point. But I would consider this a job. Whereas YouTube... Yes, it's a job. Yeah, they're both jobs, aren't they, really? I don't know. I don't know how to really refer to them. I don't think about it that way, really. But um, yeah, those are the best things. So the worst things. Can you guys take a wild guess? Can you take a wild guess as to maybe what the worst thing is? <laughs> well, if y'all don't like me being negative, now is the time to either leave your comment to complain or simply just click off this video, of course, uh, whichever your poison is. But essentially the thing that I do not like about being a YouTuber is <sighs> there's no way to say it without sounding like a dick. So I'm not going to try not to sound like a dick. It's my channel. You're asking me. Um, it, it's mainly just people that are so entitled. They think that they have any right to tell you what to do, to tell you how to do it, to comment on anything you do, whether it's the makeup you wear, to the things that you buy, to your bloody sexual orientation, whether you're having kids, like, don't get me wrong, you get that in normal life, of course you do. But normally in normal life, you get it from people you know, right? Or, or you get it rarely because even people that you don't know, it would take a lot for a random person to come up to you and say whatever people tend to say. So it's a little bit different in real life. But on the internet, honestly, you just get entitled fucking idiots. You really do. Um, that's one thing I don't like, but I mean, that's no surprise to anyone. 
Um, I think, obviously, you could, you could blanket it by saying, you know, the haters are the worst, but it just goes so much deeper than that. Like, the, you've got people that spread rumors about you. I mean, holy shit, if I could, like, tell you all the rumors that people have made up about me in the last two years, some of, the, some of them have been iconic, to be honest. I remember, uh, was it last year? I think it was when all the bullying was going down on Facebook. You remember that old stunt last year with those horrible bullies on Facebook? Um, they were say what were they saying? Someone said, right, you'll love this, I got kicked out of the International Aroid Show because I was so rude to everybody. And I was just generally an asshole. And I'm like, <laughs> when did this happen? Do you know what I mean? What on earth is that about? I've had, I've heard rumors that, um, oh, someone said once that I've purposely tried to change my accent to sound more, you know, posh and English. Um, no, my accent is just an amalgamation of different places. I was born in a town called Consett, which is near Durham, Sunderland, Newcastle. I went to school in Consett, then I went to school in Durham, then I went to university in Newcastle. So I've got kind of like an amalgamation of, um, accents and then I moved to Manchester and then now I'm mainly in Lancashire all the time so the accent's even more different so yeah I, I haven't done that either there's a rumor going around that I consistently poach plants I did I don't know if you meant I did it in person I don't know um I don't know what that's about that's that's a popular one um a lot of stuff last year because I had really large plants they were poached and things like that I've had people constantly have a go at me because the massive queen anthurium that I unboxed last year a lot of people are basically saying that it's poached because it is huge um, and that's why it's poached um, not true for example I had pictures shown to me of the anthurium in question and I had paint all over its roots because it was grown I can't remember if it was outside somebody's house like on the side of someone's house or in someone's house, but it had white paint on all of the roots. Um, and I saw it as was in their, um, you know, the person's home, essentially. So, you know, I think generally being on the internet, people will just, and I'm learning this, I'm learning this guys, don't worry, I'm on track, but I'm just learning that people just make shit up just to tarnish your character because they don't, they can't stand the fact that you're doing well and they don't like it. And, Really to say this could like turn into a whole rant, I'm not gonna let it this time. But really people will say whatever they want to tear you down or to make you seem less good or less like you're doing well or less like you deserve anybody's time because they're salty as hell for whatever reason, whether that's jealousy or, or something else. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's usually jealousy, um, but it's just how people get, isn't it? It's stupid. It's why haters just have to be heard. You know what I mean? They have to feel powerful because you make them feel so insignificant. There you go. I finally figured it out. That's why haters get really shouty because they just have to try and feel powerful. And they can't because maybe they don't have power in their own lives. They don't feel empowered in themselves. So to do it, they try and take down people that seem like they've got their shit together because they can't handle the fact that someone else having their shit together makes that person look inside their self and realize that maybe they don't. And instead of that person, you know, working on themselves and getting their life together, they choose to tear down other people. And that's how haters work. And you can give me a pat on the back for taking two years to figure that out. But you know, <laughs> honestly, on a, on a positive note, I, I know that you guys have commented stuff like that before um, on videos and I, I'm not denying that. I know you guys have. Um, it's just, it's really hard to explain this, but people can say it to you till you're blue in the face, but you kind of need examples of it and you kind of need to figure it out on your own because I really can't articulate why that is. But if someone just says, oh, it's because they're jealous, it's like, yeah, but I can't, I can't quantify that. Do you know what I mean? I can't make sense of that. It, 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 there's no, there's no example of it. It's like, oh, well, they're jealous of you because you have a channel. Right, but, but so what? I don't. I don't understand. I need more context than that because it, when people say this to you, I'm of the kind of person that has the mindset where I'm like, well, you're just saying that to make me feel better. Do you know what I mean? Um, so it's taken me a while to learn that anyway, but I am learning that. I'm learning the true um, reasons behind what negative people 
do and, and why they do it. And I think that is why, mm, not great roots, not great roots. That'll be with me a while, that one. Um, so yeah, so that's obviously, obviously no prizes for guessing that. That's what I don't like about being a YouTuber. And it doesn't just go for me. It goes for any damn YouTuber that people just have to tear down. They just have to tear them down. Um, it's really sad to see. I mean, if you watch YouTube, you'll know it happens every damn week with someone or others just getting torn apart for something. It's just shit, isn't it, really? I hope it stops. I hope more people speak up about it. And I hope people realize, hey, maybe you're the problem. Maybe it's not the person that's just minding their own business. Who would have thought? Next question. Yes, okay, awesome. Work-life balance. <laughs> Oh, the trauma. Okay, so a lot of people ask me all the time about essentially my work-life balance and, you know, how many hours a week do I work? What's my daily life like? You know, how, how much am I here? How much am I at home? How is it working? How am I relaxing? Do I have a life? How does it affect time with friends? Um, you ain't gonna like my answer, but you asked for my answer. My work-life balance is very poor. I'm just going to be honest with you, I don't really have a work-life balance. Sorry, I'm rubbing my face because my hairs are just sticking to my makeup. It's very annoying. I don't really have a work-life balance in the slightest. I work here all the time. I'm basically here for a week, at home for a week. That's kind of how it's working at the minute. When I'm here, I obviously film. I don't necessarily edit because I do that when I'm at home. So when I'm here, I'll film a couple of videos. So I've got something for when I'm at home and I will do all the shop stuff that I can manage to do. So that whether that's propagation, watering, um, pest control, tidying things up, anything, um, I will do all of that. Then when I'm at home, my task is usually to try and chill out at the same time, but not really because I'm working and I will edit content. And then that's usually when I plan more content. So that's kind of my working two week rotation could you say? So where does playtime come into it, you ask? It doesn't. It doesn't. I work seven days a week. Sometimes though, if I'm having like a down day where I'm feeling either depressed or just exhausted in some way, or I just wake up and I, you know, I wake up some mornings and my whole body's like, no, not today, bitch. Do you know what I mean? Then I will forcibly, um, providing I've got content, you know, filmed and up or whatever, waiting to be uh, released, providing I'm safe, essentially, I will just take the day off and I'll just be like, you know what, I'm just going to have to be behind this week. Um, and I do this because I don't have a balance. Those are like the, the small moments where I try and find balance back. Um, so it's not ideal. I would love to change it. It's not going to change anytime soon, unfortunately. That's just how it is. But I'm not promoting, um, I'm not trying to glamorize working hard. I'm really not. All I will say is, had I not done that for the last two years, I wouldn't be where I was today. So I don't regret living this way. It's definitely aged me pretty quick in a couple of years, but I don't overall regret it. Bloody hell, look at this, look at that. Look, <laughs> sorry, interlude, look at that. Oof. Well, that's with me a hell of a long time. There is a route there, but yeah, that's gonna be with me a while. Um, I don't regret any of it because obviously I wouldn't have the shop. I wouldn't have the channel be what it is. I wouldn't have been able to quit my job. I, I wouldn't be able to do any of it. So I'm really proud of that. And that does kind of keep me going. And it, it could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing because I feel like it keeps me working hard because I'm like, look how far I've come. Look where I want to go. You know, I have dreams and aspirations for this shop as you probably have figured out. Um, it kind of pushes me to work further towards those goals, but I'm not saying it's healthy because I don't have a social life. Obviously, I don't think anyone does at the minute with COVID. Um, but I think even when things open up again, because in the UK very soon, I think it's, is it June sometime? Everything opens back up. So restaurants, bars, all of the normal things, they open back up so we can, we can start living essentially. But life isn't really gonna change for me because I mean, I moved here from Newcastle when I left university and came to work at White Paper Games where I no longer work, obviously. Um, I, I left everything behind. I had like fragments of friends left behind. In essence, it was a bad breakup and people take sides and you know, it, it didn't end well, basically. So I came here with, I think I had two friends <laughs> to my name pretty much, uh, my best friends as it happens. 
But other than that, I don't really have any friends here. I'm just going to be honest. I know it sounds really sad, but I don't. I don't know anyone here, really. I know a couple of people that I've met through plants, but actually I'm saying a couple, it's probably one person. I don't, I don't really have anyone here. I don't really have anything that I can really do to unwind, stuff like that. It is quite difficult. And my family are all the way at home up north. So I, I don't get to do a whole lot. So maybe that is why I, I plunge myself into work a lot. And I think to myself, heck, well, if I'm here and I can't do much, hell, I'll get the most out of it. Do you know what I mean? That's just kind of my personality a little bit. But I want you to know, I'm not saying it's necessarily healthy. Um, I do think it's probably not. So I think, don't get me wrong, I think a dose of that is healthy, but to the point where I don't do anything else, it's not really healthy. Um, people ask me what I do in my free time, when I get it. Normally, honestly, I'm normally so like so tired that I'll just put something on the TV, but I'll not necessarily even be watching it. Do you know what I mean? I'll just be so tired. I might put a face mask on and stuff like that. I like to do that. Just kind of chill out, have a bath or something, but I don't get to do very much. Now, I do want to change that when things open up here in the UK a little bit more. I do definitely want to change that, do more things, get out a bit. Um, but until then, I'm, honestly, guys, I'm really not doing anything at all. I don't scroll down on Facebook anymore. I'm rarely on Facebook. I don't see things. I've just, I've so done with that shit, honestly. I'm not saying there's only terrible content on Facebook or anything. I'm just sick of it. I just can't be asked to watch people just argue or not even argue, but just flex what they've got or a lot of the time so much. I, um, I scroll down my Facebook and all I see all the time is people just selling stuff. And it's, it's normally after I've mentioned something in a video, which is fine. I get it. Um, but it just, when you, when you go on Facebook and that's all you see are plant sales, honestly, I can't be asked. Like I've just clocked off work. Do you know what I mean? I do that all the time. Um, so it's got to the point where I don't necessarily want to see it when I'm not working. It's just not something I want to look at at the weekend. And, and unfortunately, Facebook is generally very saturated with that, which is a real shame. So I, I don't really go on Facebook and that's not me. Um, you know, slagging off anyone that's selling on Facebook. I'm just saying, you know, I just can't be bothered to look at it. It's just a bit much. It feels like I'm at work still, I guess. Um, I mean, the only thing that does piss me off is, is when people just sell things and they're like, oh, I'm a private seller, so no passport. And I'm like, yes, but it doesn't actually mean it's okay to do it. I don't know. People seem to have changed the way that they write like little disclaimers on whether they can provide like documentation and stuff. Um, in it, they write it in such a way where they, it just seems to be fine and, and technically it's not. Um, but I just, I just can't be bothered with it. There's no real reason. I just can't be bothered with it. Um, so it's normally, I, I'm on YouTube. I'm looking at other YouTubers that quite honestly have nothing to do with plants. I don't really watch plant content anymore, guys. I can't. It's, and it's part of the reason it's a symptom of me not being able to shut off and not being able to do other things to wind down. So honestly, when I'm not working, I get as far away from plants as I possibly can. And I, I don't want to disappoint anyone by saying that, but it's the God's honest truth. I, I don't, I don't really watch anything about it. I'll watch something totally different. So, um, for example, actually recently, I don't know why I never watched it before, right? People are going to be like, oh my God, how can you not have watched it before? But it's so many people, right? Over a period of years. And I mean, years, so many people have been telling me to watch RuPaul's Drag Race. And I, I just, I never got around to it. I never got around to it. And this last weekend when I was at home, I was like, right, fuck this. I'm going to watch it. Oh my God. Honestly, I didn't really choose a season. I think I watched season 12 just because that's kind of what Netflix just spat at me when I clicked on Drag Race. And I was like, oh, okay, we'll do 12. Fine. Oh. Guys, honestly, I honestly think that drag queens are my spirit animal. I really do. I like, it's just my calling to just swim in the sea with them. I absolutely adore them. It was the most funny thing I've ever watched. And it was so funny, yet wholesome, yet positive, yet bitchy, yet entertaining. It was absolutely amazing. And it's basically just made me just want to watch it all the time. So I have been watching a little bit of that. What else have I been watching? 
I'm nearly finished uh, How to Get Away with Murder. I'm on the last season now. And I'm really, really sad for it to end. So actually, if you've seen How to Get Away with Murder and you have any recommendations for me on something really similar, then that would be great because I'm so sad it's ending, honestly. I'm genuinely going to have a massive come down after I've finished with that because nothing can be that good. I'm sorry, it can't. It's so good. It's so good. So that's what I've been doing anyway. That was a very long-winded answer to work-life balance. The answer is I don't have any work-life balance, but I take little bits where I can, I guess. Um, 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 uh, someone asked me about root rot advice or tips. And, you know, I'm assuming that's like dealing with root rot, growing plants back after root rot and stuff like that. I'm going to do a video on it. The video is being planned as we speak. I need to plan the video, film some B-roll for that video um, of me removing rot and things like that, and then uh, record the rest of it and edit it and put it out. I'm very behind on it because I was very ill this week, but you will be getting that very shortly. So I'm not going to say anything, unfortunately, on that subject, but you will definitely 100% get a video all about root rot and how to deal with it and everything else. So that's going to be lit when that happens. Give me a couple of weeks, guys. That's all I can ask at this point. Just give me a couple of weeks. It's just so, so, so hectic in here, honestly. Ooh, deep breath for this one. So I want to talk about this today because I've just received some very interesting information this morning. And I mean this morning. So as it happens, the other day when I put out my little um, question thing on Instagram of like, you know, what do you want to ask me? Someone said, how is EU shipping? How is it going? And I thought, ooh, like, are people aware of this or not? Because I don't know. But then again, I only found this out this morning. So shipping to the EU has been interesting. It's been very hit and miss. For example, I have had packages go to France, I believe. Absolutely fine. No problems with France, I don't think. Belgium, similar. No problems. Everything's been fine. Um, Germany, not fine, understatement of the century. Germany, not fine at all. It's been really bad, guys. I've had plants, I've got a few at the minute, um, just held in customs for about three weeks, four weeks, without any real explanation. Like, if anyone doesn't know, <laughs> I ship internationally and I ship plants most of the time, if they're not in the UK, bare root in a little clear plastic bag. So there'll be nothing on the route. If this, if I was shipping this out now, there'd be nothing on the route. It'd be in a clear bag, it'd be sealed, and they would have shipping gel in to keep the roots wet so they didn't dry out. And that's how I ship a plant. Obviously, it goes in a box, there's airbags, it's packaged nice. If you bought from me, you know what I mean. It's all suspended and it's cool. That's how we ship. So, in addition to that, we've had problems before where couriers like to pull off the important documents on the side of the box because they're idiots, quite frankly. UPS specifically love doing it. So what happens is we put on the side of the box, we do two copies of customs forms and declarations because we found out that couriers were taking them off. We do two copies of those and, was that Ben coming in? <laughs> Wait a minute, Ben's coming in with headphones on, trying to be real quiet, opening the door. I wonder if you'll hear it. He's just bobbing up and down. What are you doing? What is that? <laughs> well, can you hear me, can you? How can he not hear me and yet he can answer my questions? Suspect as hell. So anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, so we put two, two copies of customs declarations on the box and they get removed. We also put phytosanitary documentation on the front of the box and that sometimes get removed. So sometimes we've had delays due to that. We have customers um, emailing us saying, yo, sometimes they're annoyed because they don't know that we have put a phyto on the box. Yet we have, we do, by the way. Um, sometimes they're just saying, you know, the courier needs to see the phyto, you don't have a phyto. And that's fucking infuriating because we do put a phyto on the box. You can't actually get a plant out of the UK if there isn't a phyto on the box. So if anyone's ever in any doubt, every plant that leaves this, this country gets a phytosanitary certificate on it. But anyway, so we've had instances with a shit ton, and I mean a shit ton of couriers, basically taking off 
this paperwork off the box when they get, I don't know, say if a plant is going to France, it's probably taken off in France or it's taken off as it exits the UK, right? So a plant exiting the UK, we've put a fighter on it, customs forms are all on there, declarations. So the courier knows what's in the box, you know, the value of it, all of that, it's all there. It goes, someone pulls it off, not all the time, just sometimes, someone pulls it off and sends it on its merry way, whether it's, you know, an airplane or whatever, however it gets to the other end. The other end, it gets halted because they say, well, there's no documents on it. So what are you going to do? You should have documents on this. And it creates a huge headache for us. So we've had that problem. Not always. It's happening sometimes. And I think that even happens in the USA, but it's so rare. Generally, so shipping, you're asking me about shipping. I send plans to the USA, right? And they, if I posted one this afternoon, it would get there on Friday or maybe even Saturday morning at the latest, right? When I ship to USA and the UK, they get there quicker than what they do in the EU. And I mean that, really mean that. Um, yeah, plans to the USA take about a day, something like that. Plans to the EU, sometimes way longer. And I don't understand that. And I never did understand that. And there was also mysterious delays, right? I'm getting to my point, don't worry. Mysterious delays where plants were just getting seemingly just held up, even though they had all the documents. And we would ask what's going on, and they'd simply say, oh, it's just in customs. We just have to wait, it's in customs. No explanation back at all. So here's where it gets interesting. And I guess if the, you know, people say that my videos spill tea, I, I don't personally think they do. I think it's just me just saying things that other people won't say, I guess. So you can either call this tea or you can call this just me giving you some information that I'm now privy to. I guess that sounds like it's tea, right? That's not what I mean. But anyway, so I became aware of some information this morning from a really important authority, shall we say. I'm not going to say who the authority is. I'm not going to mention any names, but they have a lot of authority is all I'm going to say. And they informed us that the EU is currently being investigated for deliberately holding up packages in customs from the UK. I know. I almost don't know what to say. And we were approached because we're a massive exporter in the UK. I think we're one of the biggest, if not the biggest exporter in the UK for this type of stuff anyway. Obviously, it's not just our stuff that gets held up. By the way, it's anybody's stuff um, being held up in the EU. So if you're another shop, for example, in the UK and you're selling stuff and you've had stuff held up in the EU, this is also for you. Um, but we were asked if we'd like to have any specific cases of plants investigated um, by the official authorities because they're being held up. And I am not making this up. Honestly, guys, I promise you, this was um, told to me this morning, literally this morning at about eight o'clock. Um, yeah, so we were asked if we want to provide any, any, any examples of cases anyway, specifics um, with like destinations, addresses, things in the boxes that we want investigating. So that's really interesting, obviously. Um, sorry, if you hear rustling, Ben's just moving a shit ton of boxes. I can't really do anything about it. I'm sure it's not that loud. You probably can't even hear it. Um, so I, I don't really know what to tell you beyond that, because all I know is that the EU is currently under investigation. EU customs, I mean, I don't even know. I don't know if it's specific countries or not. Germany was mentioned, I think. Um, other than that, I'm not sure. I think it might be more than, you know, just Germany, but I know Germany was mentioned. Yeah, they're being investigated, apparently. Um, again, I'm not going to say who said it or anything like that. I don't even know if I should be telling you, to be honest. I, I, I hope it's okay to tell you that. Otherwise, well, shit, I've told you now. But yeah, I don't, I don't know why they're doing it, as in why it's been held up. Uh, I, I'm probably not rightly going to comment because I, I don't know. Like, why, why would it? Why would it be held up? Why would um, any part of the EU deliberately withhold packages? Do you know what I mean? I can, I mean, this is the thing as well. I was told what I was told in relation to plants. I can only assume they're holding up things that aren't just plants. I'm not saying this is plant specific. I didn't really get told, but the authority that told me was involved with just plants. 
Do you see what I'm saying? So, and it was their investigation. So, I don't know. I don't want to throw around any speculation though, because I realize it's me saying this and I don't want to, you know, cause a big scene. But that's kind of the situation at the minute. So it kind of makes sense to me. I'm not going to lie. Sorry, I've got like literally moss in all of my hair. It kind of makes sense to me that there is an investigation that is either starting or is now ongoing. I'm guessing it's ongoing um, because things have been a bit weird and there hasn't really been explanations. Now, yes, there is the thing where couriers are taking off um, paperwork. Yes, I think that's different. So what I was saying about that earlier on, I don't think that's what this is. This is plants have all the documents. It's been confirmed they have the documents and yet they're not moving and other stuff within the EU is apparently moving. And I'm guessing that these authorities can see that on their end or whatever. I don't know. It was just really interesting um, when we were approached this morning. I don't know if any other shops have been approached about that. I don't know. Um, I don't know. And I can't tell you why it's happening either. But there's some, some shit, I suppose. You heard it here. Um, hopefully I won't get in trouble for telling you about that. I don't know what that means for the shop next time I open shop, which to be honest with all this shit going on, I mean, Ben's moving some boxes there. It'll be a while. I reckon we're not going to do a launch for like three weeks after this, maybe. So when that does happen, um, obviously I'll keep you updated guys, but I don't know where we're shipping to. We might have to take certain countries off the roster, so to speak. Um, I know we've had to take Germany off before, so I think we need to take it off again. I don't know. I will speak to Ben about it and see what Ben wants to do because Ben's usually a little bit more in the know with that than me, but eh, I don't know. We might have to limit it again. Um, I guess just stay tuned to my Instagram. I'll put all the updates you'll need, but I don't think you're going to see any updates for, you know, a while anyway. So, so that's a thing, right? That is a thing. I did not expect to wake up today to hear that. Although, yes, it makes sense. Yes, it makes sense, but I am surprised. Does that make sense? We are nearly through this box, guys. We are nearly, nearly there. And again, I know this wasn't the most visually pleasing um, way of doing this. I will do it different if there's a next time for doing this to get you guys to see more of the lovely plants. Yeah, if you hear anything right now, that's rain. I realize I do seem a little bit, um, what's the word? Hectic, you could say, in this video. I'm just, I'm, I keep looking over there. One, because Ben is over there. Two, because it is so fucking hectic in here. I don't know how we're going to clear it all up. There are so many boxes. <laughs> no, that was Ben smiling at me with his stupid little face. So I'm smiling back. Um, there's so many boxes in here. I don't know what we're going to do about it. I think we're going to have a lot of wastage to get rid of after today, including this stuff. This is just all going to be chucked out. Oh, that's going to have to be removed. My goodness. Yeah, that's loud. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and finish this video, guys, because I have a couple left. I thought I would get through them all, but I haven't. I'm really gutted. Um, but yeah, that's loud as shit. So I'm going to finish this video now. Thank you very much for joining me today doing really random shit. I do appreciate that. I really do. Thank you for sticking with me. As I say, it's a tough week. My God, that's loud. It's a tough week <laughs> and um, I've got a lot to do. But next week, with a bit of luck, videos should go back to the videos that I kind of had planned. I think I have a video for you guys that is um, plants that ship well. My God, my God. Plants that ship well, um, probably will follow that with plants that don't ship well because I think somebody asked me for that. Hopefully a, yeah I know, hopefully a shop tour soon as well with the wall, um, shit like that. Uh, behind the scenes as well, which you don't want to see right now, trust me. Yeah, that's basically what's going to be going on. What's it? That is so loud. My God. That is so loud. Okay, I'm gonna finish that up here. I'm gonna shout at you. Sorry, I can't hear anything. I sound like a crazy person. It's because my noise cancelling's removed all the rain and now I just seem like a shouty person. But thank you very much for watching this video. Yes, it's hectic. I'm very busy. Hopefully everything will be normal next week. If you have anything you'd like to say or video requests, please leave them in the comments below. I love you all very much. Thank you for spending some time with me today. And I will see you next week. Bye, guys.